underwater hockey formation overview. Hello, my name is Liam. I'm uh, I'm from Hydro Underwater Hockey, and uh, this is our deep dive um, into underwater hockey formations. So we're going to go down the rabbit hole today, just a little bit. Um, maybe this is kind of this is probably going to be a we'll probably do a few of these, and um, I'm just going to I have some notes to start with. I'll talk to them, try not to sidetrack too much, and and then once we've got to a certain point, then um, maybe if people want to sort of explore different areas, post some comments below, and um, and if there's any questions, we can look at them later in another video. So basically, this is my trusty whiteboard, very technologically advanced. Um, so today's just like an overview. So we're not going to look into the nitty gritty, that, but we're just going to look like at the basic ideas. So what is a formation? You know, all sports have got formations, but for underwater hockey it's very important because we can't talk to each other, apart from prodding or poking each other, squeezing and pinching. Um, and so we've got, to, we've got to have a good handle on everyone's jobs within a team. So all the things that a team needs to do to cover this, that and the other, um, has got to be done by someone and formation basically lays out roles and responsibilities for everyone, gives everyone jobs to do and then as a way to keep everyone on the same page, that's how I always think about it. Um, how do we talk about it? We kind of talk down the page when we're, when we're discussing things. So you might say if a formation is like this, then you'd say it's one, three, two. You have like two, three, one or 3-3, three, three. so it's the opposite of football. Football, you start from the back and you say it's like a 4-3-3. Three, three. With hockey, we start from the front and we work backwards. Um, I don't know why. People just started that way and then it continued. So, um, and, and the last thing, we're talking formation. Formation is kind of the arrangement or the shape or the pattern of um, the players in your team as they move around the pool. But that's not the same thing as tactics. So tactics is, very, is like a completely other topic. Formation is how you set up. Tactics is what you try to do. Um, that's my thoughts of anyway. So before we get into it more, who is this video for? So this is basically for either if you're a beginner and you want to know about this kind of stuff or you want to sort of develop it a little bit more at your club maybe. Um, or maybe you've been playing hockey for a long time, but you've always sort of wondered, what do those guys over there do? Like, what, how, how do I know how I do it, but how do other people do it? So this is, in, in that case, you might be somewhere else in the world and play your hockey and have been playing for a long time. Well, what I know best is the way that we do it here in New Zealand, because that's where I live, part of the New Zealand Underwood Hockey community. And so maybe this is like a little glimpse into the, um, the workings of how we do it over here, just to, as a comparison. So, the first thing we're going to talk about is, on my notes, roles, um, sort of roles and positions. So we basically have, we've got forwards, mids, or centres, there's a lot of terminology that we can go, I mean a lot of the terminology that we have here in New Zealand is going to be completely different from for other countries, so mids, we call them centres normally. Some people call them midfields, some people call them pivots, depending on where you are. Forwards, some people call the wing, uh, forwards wingers. And then centre forwards, we and then you have backs. We actually call our backs wingers, just to make it complicated. Um, so this is, as this is a New Zealand flavoured video, I'm just going to keep it like that. Backs wingers, and then goalies, full backs. And some people like to use numbers as well, so um, in which case these guys are, what is it, six, three, one, two, four and five, I think. But please correct me if I'm wrong, people who use numbers. Um, so these are the sort of different positions, traditionally the different names for the different positions in a underwood hockey formation. So if we look and see how they might actually work out. We say if you have a team which is playing 3-3, three, three, then you've got forward, a centre forward and a forward, a back, a full back, 
and another back and your 3-3. Three, three. Um, so these guys are the forwards, these guys are the backs. That's very traditional. Um, for us here in New Zealand we normally do a 2-3-1, um, some places we do. So for us we have two forwards, then we have a line of centres, so we have a winger, centre and a winger, think of it as a line of centres, and then a goalie at the back. Um, so that's the, those are the sort of the position names. Now what they actually do, their roles can be different. So um, the roles are not always the same, but there are generalisations. So if you have, and it depends on which country you come from or, or, <laughs> or how you're playing. So this is, this is the rabbit hole, basically. We, we're starting to go down. So if I have a forward in New Zealand, it means that if the puck is here, so the puck is there, all the backs, so in New Zealand, remember we, oh no. in New Zealand, remember we have two, three, one. These are our forwards. These are our backs. Everyone else is the backs, basically. That means that these forwards are in front of the puck. The backs are all behind the puck, generally, in a setup. So as soon as the puck sits there for a couple of seconds, the forwards will be rolling around. One forward will be trying to get in front of it there to receive a pass or to back tackle the opposition. The other forward will get there next to him to help him out. And all the backs will be rolling around to try and get behind the puck like this. And that makes us our, that makes our split forwards, backs. And it's, it's nice and simple. But then if you have um, another team which is playing, say, a 3-3, three, three, so they're playing uh, forward like that. So this could be Australia or, no, not Australia. Um, Australia, a, a very, well, sorry, I'm not going to make generalisations about countries. <laughs> the style that Australia has traditionally played is very much like this with forwards in front of the puck. Maybe that guy defensively might come down a little bit further, but generally forwards in front of the puck and the backs behind the puck. And they've, they've basically, the guys who sort of, I think they probably invented that, very good at it. Um, but some sometimes you will have other people play a slightly different approach, which we've actually done in New Zealand um, not too long ago actually, 15 years, I suppose that's a long time, but where you actually have everyone coming back behind the puck. So, um, and I'll say Argentina uh, at the moment, the style that Argentina played a couple of years ago was like this, so it will, I'll just call it the Argentin Argentinian style two years ago. Maybe they weren't doing this, maybe it was just me who thought they were doing this, but so forward, centre forward, I don't even know if they're playing 3-3. Three, three. We'll just completely forget about that. Do, there's six of them in there, somewhere, okay. <laughs> so here's the puck. And basically, they probably had forwards in their formation. I don't know how many or what they were doing, but they would have had a strike. They would have come out. They would have had something like this. with forwards out there striking and then after the strike is taken that's the only time where the forwards are actually necessarily um, definitely in front of the backs because then when it comes over to the wall the forward would come down and he'd drive the puck forward and then if he loses the puck he just rolls back behind and then the back goes in and then the forward goes in and they have a rotation so the forwards in a formation like this actually come in behind the puck and when you look at it, the, the sort of traditional way that I was setting out how, how we do it here in New Zealand, how some other teams do it, with the guys behind the puck being the backs and the guys in front of the puck being forwards, well, a formation working this way, they don't have anyone in front of the puck who's actually waiting for passes in front of the puck or coming back, back tackling. So technically, the whole team is kind of backs, which is pretty different. Um, and the, when you have the forwards is on a strike, um, the forwards go in there first into the puck on free parks, on advantage parks, things like that. So that's a pretty different way to um, to run your formation, a different sort of approach, and th and maybe that's basically um, just an example of how you could call something a forward, but the role of those positions is completely different depending on the kind of um, formation that you're playing. Now, I may have completely compu confused you and me, um, but I'm just going to move on. Generalizations, most of the time you're going to have 
um, for pucks here on the wall, which it often is in the game, you're going to have your sort of strong side and weak side um, of the formation as well. So we're going to have a back, we're going to have a back out there. This is the strong side back and the weak side back. Here in New Zealand we call them the onside and the offside. Um, some places it's strong weak, um, some places it's... No, I'll say off one. no, we'll just leave it at that, we won't go any further than that. Yes, and then your midfields, generally your midfield or your centre is going to be sort of in the middle of the formation. If it's a centre forward it might be a little bit further, further forward, but generally the middle spot is going to be taken up by the centre. If you have the puck in the if you have the puck in the corner, then normally you have a couple of forwards up here. Centre is going to be in that middle space to cut off the 45 degree swim to the goal, and then you're going to have your back line kind of operating down here somehow. So rough generalizations of those positions. So let's look at formations, like what, what formations do people use out there, what's quite common. Um, here in New Zealand, we have, when kiddies start playing, they play a 2-2-2, two, 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 and they have like buddies. So they're in there, they're like 11 years old playing mini hockey. They have a little buddy system where they have their, their buddy and they go out, park is here, and they basically just try and attack the puck, they try and stay next to their buddy, and then as soon as they hit the surface, these next guys go in, and these guys roll back and rotate. And it's all a bit of a mess, but they basically just try and all stay behind the puck and they basically all try and stay in their little buddies, 2-2-2. Two, two, two. Sometimes we've had um, teams play 2-2-2 two, two, two at a higher level, but generally suited to a really narrow court where um, you don't get caught out by a big move sideways. As soon as that court is quite wide, um, you can have problems with that. So 2-2-2 two, two, two is not very common um, at our club and sort of club level and above, um, not for a while. So you can have, uh, we'll put that there, just to remember what I've covered. So 2-2-2, two, 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 you've got a standard 3-3, three, three, which is basically, bucks here on the wall, you've got forward, centre forward, forward, back, going back, and this is kind of, is everything getting, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, interesting. So, I've just noticed that this is mirror imaged. Is this going to be mirror imaged for the whole thing? It looks like I can't write properly. Well, we're just going to have to deal with it. Okay. Um, what a disaster. <laughs> Alright, so we've got three, three. And basically, um, the key to making this work is... Uh, keeping the back line staggered and uh, what happens is any time the puck starts to go out around, around the side here this forward runs up on it and any time the puck starts to go back down like this the back closes across like this. So you've basically got one centre guy, a centre forward in front of him, these guys are sort of making most of the momentum um, from the backs and then this guy's the swing, he's sort of like the safety, she is the safety, swings at the, side, at the back like that. That's a uh, sort of typical 3-3. Three, three. That's better, eh? Um, then we've got 2-3-1. So this is this is how a lot of stuff is set up in New Zealand. So you've got your two forwards. They work like a pair. Then you've got your line of three across the middle and then one at the back. And this guy sort of sweeps the back like this. Um, oh, man. Yep. Uh, what else could you do? There's different ways to play three three as well. Sometimes you can have you can have three forwards, um, a goalie, and then a couple of backs like this, or you can have three forwards, a couple of backs, and a goalie. A little bit different, very different. Um, but that's three three as well. Then you kind of got a. Th uh 2-1-2-1, two, one, two, one, which is a little bit different from your 3-3 from your three, three because it basically has um, 
this player playing a little bit further back, a little bit more um, conservatively, and then these guys are operating sort of more just with their backs on the side. Like you basically end up with these triangle shapes. Um, I suppose you could say. I suppose you could say that. It ends up being the back line is very similar to three, three, but the forward line is a little bit different. Where you have, um, you don't really have this player swimming up and having like a like three people swimming off as forwards themselves. This player is much more distributing um, and trying to hit these forwards and set them up. Yeah, that one we used to use that years and years and years ago. It's not. Uh, it hasn't been popular for a long, long time here, um, which is why I did such a rubbish job um, outlining it, obviously, because I don't know much about it anymore. But that's the formation that I started with when I first started playing uh, a long, long time ago. Um, so differences. Oh, we could put like a. I suppose we could put a one, three, two there as well, like. And they've got two backs, three centres, and, and a sort of like a seagull forward. This is a really defensive formation because you've got all these guys technically behind the puck a lot of the time, with one guy sort of spoiling at the front. But also can be very aggressive because if you treat these guys as forwards with these guys as two backs, then you can actually have it can be a bit more like four forwards and two backs. So a little bit, a little bit different. So. We've been through some of the differences in some of these, um, and I'll just uh, I'll just quickly show some of the similarities. So, if you have a uh, let's say you have say this is a three-three. I'm trying to show you here. Oh man, just see this guy here. Say this is a 3-3, then you end up with this guy sweeps at the back, this girl sweeps at the back, this girl, this girl on the side sweeps up and down, and then you end up with four, you've got four people there on the on the channel, um, sort of doing a lot of the work there. So if that's a 3-3, then if I, um, I'll redraw up here. So this is the two three one, but if for this formation, you have four people in the channel, and you have someone sliding at the back, and you have someone sliding at the at the side. Very similar. The difference is just how much this person commits in, whether or not they commit in all the time, or freely, or whether they're trying to hang out. This one tries to hang out much more. This player tries to start from a higher position, this player starts from a lower position and then runs up. So there's some changes in how they work, but again you have similarities as well. So even though the formations are different, of course they're trying to do the same things. Um, they're trying to cover the same areas, so you're always going to have similarities sometimes. Sometimes so much similarity that it's very hard to tell the differences. And um, yeah. Kind of, that's kind of the start of it. So there's the start of our rabbit hole. Um, yeah, I got a bit confused talking through all that. I should uh, have better notes next time. But if you, if you have questions, um, if you want to sort of, if you if you want to look at the way that you play hockey, um, wherever you play hockey, and you want to kind of talk about it or um, or point something out, or you want me to talk about it. Um, or you want to tell me how wrong or right uh, some of the stuff that I've spoken about is. Or if you've got terminology for your country or, or whatever, chuck it in the comments below. And um, and if we do another video like this, then um, we can add it in. Uh, if you do like this kind of thing, um, then yeah, subscribe to the channel and uh, try, and can try and see if we can get more content out like this on occasion. Um, maybe make it a bit more regular, especially when we're all just hanging around um, with the pools closed. 
Um, thank you very much, and uh, enjoy your day. Oh yeah, and buy all our products, because they're good.